Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video to talk about, finally, the last summer banner that's going to be coming up because it's the... summer's close to closing. I think there's only 10 days left officially of it. So, of course, well, not in the event, in summer itself over here. For over here, we have, like, about a week left. But during this last week, this is the last banner that's going to be showing up. It's going to feature Doman, and it's going to feature Christopher Columbus, and I'm going to go over them real quick. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like. Comment, tell me how. I know for a fact there's plenty of people out here who are waiting for Doman. So feel free to tell me how you're dude for Doman. I'm not summoning for Doman, but if you're <laughs> how you plan, your plans are coming along, feel free to tell me. And if you do summon, come back here and feel free to tell me how you did. I'm always interested to hear how people do. And, yeah, sub to me. I'm almost to 3,000, and that'll be awesome when I hit it. Next. <clears throat> so, yeah, this is the banner. This is going to be the final banner of the Caldea Summer Adventure. Uh, it is technically a man banner featuring two men. We're going to go with the lesser men. Also, it does have all the craft essences from this event as well. Let's go with the lesser of two men, the man, the, the man that you will accidentally get that you don't really care to want. I guess there is someone out there who wants Christopher Columbus. I can't really think of it, but anyway, if you do want Christopher Columbus, this is your best shot because he is story locked, which means he is basically only really behind one uh, type of banner, which is the, the constant one that's always around here. So he's actually a big pain in the ass to actually pull. He's basically limited with extra steps, is the way I like to call it. So let's go. Christopher Columbus, writer. <sighs> I, can't, I can't talk about this guy. Okay, uh, one quick, two arts, two buster. His active skills. The first one is the Voyager of the Storm B. Increases parties... One moment before I forget something. There we go. Uh, uh, increases party's MP damage for one turn, increases party's attack for one turn, a whopping 14% and 14%, baby, totaling for a 28% increase for a single turn, get it. Unyielding Will C, grants self guts death for one time three turns, and then charges on MP gauge, a 30% MP charger tied to a three turn, one HP reviving guts, hell yeah. And third skill, Conquistador, <sighs> EX. Increases on buster performance for 3 turns, gains crit stars, 20% uh, buster, 15 stars, cooldown of 6, and that's his actual only good skill? I guess you could argue this skill is good. I wouldn't, because the, the, the I guess the guts is not very good. It only lasts 3 turns. But to be fair, most guts kind of last 3 turns. I don't think it's very good. Having your guts tied for when you want to only use it for when you're about to, be di uh, to die, having it tied to your MP gauge is kind of stinky. It's not the greatest. And this is a cooldown of 6. This is a cooldown of 7. This is a cooldown of 5. That's the other thing is that typically Guts completely <laughs> screws over your cooldown, so you're going to be waiting a long time for it to come back. Passive skills, magic resistance D, and writing B. Increases quick performance by 8%. Uh, pen skill is an anti-writer damage aptitude. Increase on attack against the writer enemies. And his rank A noble phantasm which eventually goes A+, plus after you do it into his interlude. The Santa Maria Drop Anchor Exploration of the New World. It is an buster A+, plus anti-army noble phantasm. Hits five times. Um, deals damage to all enemies. Reduces their critical attack chance for three for three turns. The damage is 400% at MP level 1. It is 600% at level 5. The, char the crit chance down is 50% at charge level 1. If you get it all the way to charge level 5, it is 100% chance. There's not a lot of ways for me to tell you that uh, Christopher Columbus is not a good unit in any stretch of the imagination. Even with Vich, you cannot. You would have to go out of your way to be able to loop this again. So even with the idea of... You, I guess you could, in theory, loop with him. I don't know why you ever would. He's not really built for that. He's not really built for anything. He just kind of exists. And uh, probably needs some buffs to the first and second skill. I think the third skill is pretty alright. It's not the greatest, but it's not the worst. I've seen worse. This is about, uh, actually, 20%. It's probably nowadays. He probably needs it all over, but if you look at three-star writers, no, I think even then he's not He's not the greatest. Because, um, I think that red hair is better than him. Let me look at red hair. Yeah, increase on quick performance for three attacks, five turns. A little different, 30%. Increased star generation rate, 
three attack, three, uh, five turns. Oh. Oops. A martial horse grants self evasion, invincibility, 80%, 600%, 80%, third skill. Uh, increase on critical damage for three attacks, five turns. This is kind of where he. Oh no, for some reason I remember that. Red hair is much better at quick looping, but maybe it's not the fairest thing to say, like, that he's a better looper than him. It's not much to go off of anyway. But anyway, Christopher Columbus, the only positive I could ever say about Christopher Columbus is that the uh, the artist behind Christopher Columbus really loves Columbus. So, if you really love the artist and their just crazy dedication to this man that... Um, JP seems hell bent to make you care about because he keeps coming back every summer and I get annoyed every single time he comes back because I feel like he makes the story worse. I would actually think it's better if they just got rid of Columbus at this point and stop having him ruin summers. Um, he's really bad. And yeah, he'll probably stay bad. And that's about it. But if you want him, this is your chance to get him, I guess. I know there has to be someone out there besides the artist who really wants Columbus at MP5. Those people have to exist. Anyway, let's move on from one guy I don't like to the guy I also don't like, but is insanely good and game-breaking. We have Doman, who is a limited servant. Uh, Doman, who is a alter ego. He has two quicks, two arts, one buster. His active skills, okay, hold on to you this. Hold on to your butts for this one. Ridicule Cat EX reduces all enemies' attack for three turns, reduces their defense for three turns, inflict the terror status for one time three turns. Chance to um chance to activate the debuff below every turn when activated. Five hundred percent chance to stun them for one turn. Inflict confusion status for three turns to them. Thirty uh, percent chance to activate the debuff below every turn. When activated, 500% chance to seal their skills for one turn. Inflict curse for 500 damage for three turns to them. The attack down, the attack down is uh, 20%. The defense down is 30%. The terror activation chance is 40%, and that is a cooldown of six. The second skill is the Dark Karma A. Grant self gut status for two times five turns. Increases crit damage against the evil alignment and the chaotic alignment. Uh, of ally, though, increase the critical damage of allies with the evil alignment for three turns. Increase the critical damage of allies with the chaotic element for three turns. Very different. The revive is 3000 HP, and again, it activates two times, five turns. 50% and 50% on the cooldown of seven. Look at how much you get from this. <laughs> and then compare it to the 30% charger. I guess it's not fair. You're comparing a three to a five, but whatever. He should, Doman should be 10 times better than whatever he's got, but still, it is very silly to see they both have the same cooldown to 7. It seems unfair. Curse of the Doman A++, charges on MP gauge, increases attack of allies with evil alignment, increases the attack of allies with the chaotic alignment for 3 turns, then inflicts curse for 5 turns to all enemies. The MP up is, of course, 80% because he needed it. Uh, evil attack up is 20%, the chaotic attack up is 20%, the curse damage is 2,000, and the cooldown is of 7. Uh, his passive skills are Territory Creation B, Item Construction A, and Magic Resistance A, Darkness Essence B, High Servant, uh, and Hedonism EX, um, which is an increased own gen MP generation rate when taking damage by 20%. Third skill is an Anti-Alter Ego Damage Attack Aptitude, Trust No One, Not Even Yourself, and his Noble Phantasm is a Rank B Quick. Five hits. Deal damage to all enemies, inflict stat, uh, curse status for 1,000 damage for 5 turns of them, and 100%, 20% chance to instant kill them. Note, the instant kill succeeds against mob enemies with 80% uh, or higher death rate, basically bronze rarity. Um, it always succeeds against them, and then using the Soho High School uni uh, uniform with instant kill enemies with the 50% death rate, basically. Silver rarity, he just instantly kills them. As you can see here, here are the chances. If their death rate is 100%, the instant kill rate was 100%, but the Darkness Essence is 140%. It is insane what he's doing here. He's just kill He's murking them, basically. Uh, Jesus Christ. I forgot how... Sometimes you just need to be reminded how good a unit is sometimes. NP level... I also, I think based off of this, it also is... It doesn't interfere with your MP charging. Your MP gaining, I should say. Because this activates after the damage is done already. Um, 
and he also inflicts curse stats for five turns on them, increases curse damage on them as well. Uh, the curse damage rate up is 100% at level uh, charge level one, and if you get it all the way to the final charge, it's 200%. So it increases at an increment of 25%. That's Doman currently on NA. He is probably the best quick servant uh, for quick looping that you could ask for. They made this man stupid. They've made his man good. There's no denying how good he is. There, even if you don't like him like me, because you're not supposed to like a, an evil dick bag like him. I've gone for this multiple times. There's just no denying how insanely good this man is. He is insane. Absolutely incredible. Incredibly built. He can be functioned, as I said, as a looping servant. But even if you don't want to do looping, you can mess around his curse stuff with Van Gogh. And have a lot of fun there because a lot of his the curse stuff that he does is really good. He even He's so good he even makes instant kill good which is to be fair summer kiara does something similar but hers i think has a build-up of some kind if i remember correctly i might be remembering it wrong uh but both of them have um instant kills that i remember being good because they're ones that activate after the fact chance to instant kill yeah so she's similar in that she will instantly kill bronze but she is unable to um She's not able, she just doesn't do it because her, hers is 100% at overcharge, level 1, and his is 120% just free off the bat, which is pretty good. And yeah, there's just no denying Doman. If anyone tries to tell you that Doman is not good, you can take it from me and say that they are lying to you. They are trying to make you not have Doman and not try and use him in any kind of, kind of capacity because they do not like him, but... Um, regardless of anything about that, there's just like no denying how crazy good he is. And yeah, he there's a reason why he keeps coming back. He's also mad popular, so it's really the the best you could ever ask for for a unit. If you have a crazy popular unit, you typically want them to be also insanely busted to use, so that it feels warranted <laughs> and. Doman's built in such a particular way that it's, I kind of can't see him ever being, you know, a point where he needs a buff of some kind. Not at least at the four. It would have to be like Merlin, where it hits you like years later, and they've actively started you releasing units that screw with your ability to like mix with them. Then I would say, yeah, maybe Doman needs a little bit more help. But the way he is now, no, he's insanely good. So if you're going for him and you've been saving for him. Even if you were saving for him because you like them, you already made the correct choice. But if you're saving because you wanted a crazy strong unit, you've got a pretty good choice in here. He's uh, really good. And yeah, the only... So yeah, this banner, is it worth summoning on? Yeah, it is. The one thing I will say, though, is that if you're someone who's maybe waiting for Melusain near the end of December and you're thinking like, I don't know, should I go for Doman now? Or should I keep, should I keep saving? You know, just save a little bit more? I'll say this about this banner, and, and this is goes for Doman in general, I think. This man keeps showing up in summer and keeps being put in banners for summer. Um, he was in this Ardeal call, which is basically after summer. He's in Ar Arctic World because this is when he gets the, um, <laughs> the actual summoning, uh, the summer costume. So, it seems like at this point, they're just dedicated to running him every September or August again for a year. Just non-stop, they just keep bringing him back. So if you're someone who's just like, oh man, this is my one shot to get Doman, and if I don't get him here, uh, who knows when I'll ever get him. It's not like that. You can literally just do what I do with, with Summer Ibuki, and you could wait two years for Ordeal Call Campaign Part 2. Um, and just get him then. To be honest, if you're willing to wait two years, I know most people aren't willing to wait two years, and it's probably just makes more sense for you to try and waste whatever you have the second he shows up. And you know, I feel like if you da if you're that dedicated to the dude, that you should at least maybe save up for pity and wait for the two year one, because then you know you have plenty of time to save up, and you can save tickets, and you can save all the bunch of extra side stuff. But maybe I'm just projecting here. Um, either way, if you're worried about like, oh man, when am I ever going to be able to summon Doman? There's so many stuff that I want in the future. Who knows when Doman's going to come back? I can tell you right now, Doman's coming back. He's going to come, he's going to keep coming every year. 
put that on the gravestone. Doman, he'll keep coming. And that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Again, I wish you guys the best of luck if you're summoning for um, the man, the myth, the legend, Doman. I wish you good luck at getting Doman. If you are summoning for Christopher Columbus, I wish you the best of luck in getting Christopher Columbus. In general, I want you guys to have great pulls. And that's it for today's video. And thankfully, that's it for the, the crazy rush of summer banner units as well. Very happy about it. So now I can actually start <laughs> start making my video where I start planning for way farther ahead. I already got summer Ibuki planned out, but I actually need to start looking forward to the next year. Because there's a certain unit that's coming out that I want to get and P5, or at least try to. So that's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of saving to even attempt to try and get it. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, happy summons, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!